Good morning, Year 5, and welcome to Thursday's Math Quiz. Um, we have finished now looking at area and perimeter. So for the last week and a half of the term, what we would normally be doing in school is I would try to make sure that we were plugging any gaps that we had from the term. So anything that people found a bit tricky, uh, we would try and work in small groups and um, see if we could work that out. Uh, and anything that came out of the pumas, uh, which is the maths assessments that we did, we would try to do a bit of extra work on that to make sure that you were as solid in those bits as possible. Now, because of the way that we're working, it's quite tricky for me to do small group work. So what I'm going to do is we're going to cover some things that quite a lot of us could do with some practice on, whether that's because it's used quite a lot, whether it's because it needs to be used in different contexts, or just um, because it's something that will be useful for us to practice. So over the next week and a half, we will be doing a bit of recap. So if we do something and you think, oh, we've done that already, that's fine. It's a chance for you to practice. And hopefully at the end, if you're feeling really comfortable with it, you can have a go at the challenging parts of it. Um, so today we're going to look at using formal written methods to work out addition sum. So we're going to be using the column method of addition just to keep practicing that. At the end of the slides, there are three sort of levels of challenge. You can try all three if you'd like to, or you can have a look at just a couple of them. Um, and then tomorrow we're going to look at subtraction. And at the end tomorrow, there's going to be some word problems that you can really try and apply your knowledge of addition and subtraction to. So let's have a look at our starter for today. So you've got two problems on the board here. You've got a fluency problem, which is which sum is greater. So you need to calculate both of those sums and work out which symbol should go between them. And then you've got a second one where someone has had a really good go at solving a column method addition problem but they've made a couple of mistakes. So can you imagine that you're the teacher and can you write down what their mistakes are and how you could help them? So pause the video, have a go at those, and then I'll go through the answers. Okay, so let's have a look first of all. Um, so with the fluency question, 5,468 plus 2,725 gives us 8,193, whereas 6,192 plus 1,929 gives us 8,121. So 5,468 plus 2,725 is the greater answer. Um, with the deepening stretch, we can see straight away, if we start from the ones column, three plus one is not two. What they've done is they've subtracted there. Um, so they need to make sure that they add. So that should be a four in the ones column. Eight plus two is 10. So they're right to have a zero there and they've carried the extra one from the tens. Six plus four is 10, but they have forgotten to add the carried one. So they should have another one in the hundreds there and carry another one over. Four plus three is seven, but they haven't added the one that they didn't carry over. So they should have ended up with 8,102. So well done if you managed to spot all of those quite common mistakes that we might make if we were rushing with column method of addition. Um, so with our column method of addition, we need to make sure that we are always starting from the lowest value column. Now in all of these sums, it's the ones column. But the reason I put start from the lowest value column is because when we later on in the year start dealing with decimals, uh, you always start from whatever the smallest value is. So in this case, it's the ones, but it's not always the ones. If your answer ends up being more than nine and ends up being two digits, then that's where you need to exchange. It's where you need to swap for the next column so that we can move across. And we're going to have a look at the visual representations of that as well. So here we have a sum. Um, so pause it, have a go at solving that, and then we'll go through the, the different ways that we can look at it. Okay, so if we go going to the next slide, I know that seven plus one is eight. Eight plus three is 11, which means that the one from 11 in the ones column goes underneath, and then the tens carries across. Six plus five is 11, add the extra one is 12. So the two goes in the hundreds column, the one carries across. One plus four is five, plus an extra one is six. So our answer is 6,218. It's important to, at the end, just stop and think about what the answer is. Sometimes we can fall into the trap of just working out each bit individually, but it's useful for us to know what the answer to the whole sum is as well. Um, and if we have a look at our place value column, we can see here, this is our 1687, this is our top number. Now, normally what we might do is if we were having this, we would put the larger number at the top, we'd put the greater number at the top. Um, so I've got seven ones here because I've got seven in the ones column there. I'm going to add an extra one. So that gives me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ones in that column. That's not a problem. That fits in there fine. So now for my next column, I need to add three tens in. So 
So I've got one, two, three. Now the issue that we have there is that I am left with 11 tens. And I can't have 11 in the tens column. Each column can only have one digit. But I know that 10 tens is the equivalent to 100. So if I take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten tens, then I can exchange them for 100. Now, I wish that I had some clever piece of machinery that meant if I moved them over here, it would turn it into a 100 um, place value counter, but unfortunately I don't. So I am going to have to just delete that and exchange it for 100. Um, now, I've got 600s there. I've got the 100 from moving, uh, from exchanging my 10 tens for 100, and I've got to add five more. So 10. So one, two, three, four, five. Now, again, I can see there that I've now got 12 hundreds, and I can't fit 12 into the hundreds column because it needs to be one digit. So I know as well that if I exchange 10 hundreds, that is the same as 1,000. 10 times 100 is 1,000. Again, if I had a snazzy piece of kit, that would automatically change, but unfortunately I don't. So I will exchange those 10 hundreds for 8,000. And then I've got four more thousands to add. One, two, the joys of technology, three, four. So I can see for my final answer, I have got eight in my ones column, one in my tens column, two in my hundreds column, and six in my thousands column. So 6,218. And if I have a look back over here, it's exactly the same answer. You're just seeing it in a more visual way. So have a go at this one where we've got uh, something in the 10,000s column there as well. Okay, let's have a look together. So I know that four plus one is five, two plus three is five, six plus six is 12. So the two goes underneath and the one changes over. Four plus four is eight plus the extra one is nine. And one plus nothing is one. We need to remember that this number, although it's invisible there, it doesn't have any 10,000s. So we can still say it's one plus nothing. And again, we can represent that in place value counters. So here I've got my number, it's got one ten thousand, four thousands, six hundreds, two tens, and four ones. So I've got to add one more one in, which gives me five altogether, three more tens in, which gives me five tens altogether. Both of those are fine because they're single digits, so we don't need to um, we don't need to exchange anything from there. Six plus six hundreds, so if I add one two, three, this is where if I was clever, I would have had smaller digits on the bottom. So I can see now that I've got more than 10 hundreds in there, I've got 12 hundreds. I know that 10 hundreds is the equivalent to a thousand, so I can exchange, hopefully, 10 hundreds for a 1,000. So if I take them to the bank, Rid of ten of them, get another thousand in. I've got four more thousands to add. One, two, three, four, four, and I don't need to add any extra ten thousand. So my answer ends up with one ten thousand, nine uh, thousands, two hundreds, five tens, and five ones. So I should end up with nineteen thousand two hundred and fifty-five. And if I have a look, nineteen thousand two hundred and fifty-five. So hopefully that gets you to see the visual representation of what the column method does and how it works. Uh, now, here we've got dear old Esme. Uh, Esme is given the sum 19,148 plus 4,237. She thinks that she's laid it out correctly in the column method and she's got the answer 61,518. Um, have a look at that, pause the video, where has she gone wrong and what does she need to do to rectify that? Okay, hopefully you all notice that when she's laid out the column method, she doesn't have the ones in the same column. So 4,237 has got seven ones, three tens, two hundreds, and four thousands. But 19,148 has got a ten thousands column, which the um, which 4,237 has a zero of. So we need to move it across. She's done everything else correctly in terms of she started from over here, 
but she hasn't laid it out correctly. So she can't have the right answer. So if I come across, I can see that eight plus seven is 15. So my five goes in there and my one goes there. Four plus three is seven plus the one is eight. One plus two is three. Nine plus four is 13. And then one plus zero is one plus the other one is two. So I should end up with 23,358. So she was quite a long way from the correct answer, even though she only made one small mistake. So that's why we need to be really careful when we are setting out the column method. OK, uh, there's a few different types of work that you can do with this one today. There is this one, which is nine arithmetic sums that you can have a go at. Um, all of the answers are towards the end, so I will bow on, but pause on this one if you want to try this one first. There is this one where we've got three sums where there have been mistakes made. So it's your job to have a go at being the teacher. Um, have a go at correcting those sums. Can you work out what mistake has been made? Can you write a sentence explaining what, sen what mistake has been made as well? So pause on this one if you want to have a go at this one. And finally, we've got quite an open-ended one. So spend your lottery winnings. Congratulations, you have won one million pounds on the lottery. Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, which of the following items will you buy and how much will you have left? How close can you get to spending everything? You can buy more than one of each thing. Now, obviously, there are lots and lots of different ways that you could do this one. So that's a nice open-ended question that takes you up to larger numbers. Um, although, if there was a video game console that was actually cost £7,842, I doubt that so many people would be in today. Um, I will go through onto the next two slides to show you the answers. Pause on them when you're there. If you're stuck with anything, then start with the answers and work backwards. See if that helps you. Uh, and if you're still stuck, then please feel free to email me and answer some questions. Tomorrow, we will keep using this um, knowledge of how we can use the formal method of, of addition because we will be doing some word problems that link addition and subtraction. So don't let this go out of your head. Make sure that you keep it in there. Here are your answers for the first nine questions. And here are your answers for the next three. Um, good luck, guys. Happy hunting. And again, email me your work and email me anything.